Nerf gun is open. Um, I'm going to see if I can save the uh, trigger system here. Looks pretty cool. Um, I have to get all this stuff out of here. Uh, don't know if I want to leave the batteries for the LED lights, but we'll figure that out. So I've stripped everything out. Um, I'm able to salvage two of the uh, trigger systems here. And then I think I'm going to use this button here for the reload. Um, that seems to work okay. Um, so now that I got that taken care of, now I'm going to start working on where I'm going to mount the camera. So I had to make a little trigger return spring here. Uh, I just had to drill a hole through here, put a spring and screw it down. Uh, but as a result of that, I'm going to have to wear away some of the material in here to make room for the spring but it should work okay. All right, so I'm back on the gun build. Uh, I finally got the adapter that I needed from Ray for the uh, fisheye lens. Um, what I'm trying to do right now is I want to mount it in the uh, original thing here, which mounts up in here. Um, what I want to do though is I'm going to file down the inside of here because this barrel uh, almost goes through and what I'm going to do on the back side is use the original nut to hold it steady in the back and use the uh, actual fisheye lens adapter to hold it in from the front and that should be pretty good. Alright, so through the power of the Dremel, uh, I was able to make the original nut for the IR camera about like that. Uh, I should be able to bottom this out in there. And it looks pretty good. Uh, now I should be able to snake the camera right through. The reason I did this is because I want to still use the lens cap on the, the fisheye lens. Uh, I don't want to get it scratched up. So this should bottom out pretty close, I think. Something like that. And does the cap still work? Yes, it does. All right, so first successful project done. Alright, so now I'm going to put this back in its original position. Uh, it just kind of mounts up on this, just like so. Alright. And this thing can go back on here. That was uh, something I was a little bit concerned about, uh, but it looks like everything's lining up the way I wanted it to. I'll put the cover back on, and I should be good for a while with the rest of the build. Alright, so this was the clip that the uh, Nerf darts would go in. Um, I wanted to maintain the look of the gun, and I thought this would be useful to maybe stick the Arduino down in there. Um, but either way, if I wanted to make it look good, I still have to have the clip there, which will be countersunk in here. So, uh, after a little hack and destroying and drilling, uh, I was able to get the spring that holds the Nerf darts out of there. And, uh, now we have a nice little compartment that'll go back in there like that. And that'll be nice to be able to lock it in. Alright, so uh, one of the things that I was looking at with the trigger, uh, it's got a lot of travel. It was a Nerf gun. Uh, I have reused the micro switch that's there, so it does have a micro switch. It's not uh, a crappy switch, but 
what I noticed is there's a lot of trigger travel. Um, I put a spring on it so it comes back, but what I want to do is I'm going to measure the uh, resistance on the switch, and I want to find out how much travel I need on this piece to get continuity through the switch. Uh, I see a little bit of a wear mark, um, kind of like over in this area here, about halfway between that knob and where it is now. So I'm just going to move it until I see continuity, and it looks looks like about right, about halfway on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to I'm going to get like a piece of uh, probably either a piece of wood or maybe. Yeah, wood is probably best. I'm just going to carve up a piece of small wood, uh, actually a piece of molding that I had laying around. I'm just going to shave that down and get that in there, right about there, so the travel on this is stopped. And that'll be nice and snappy. I'll probably hot melt glue it down in the bottom, and that should be good. That'll make me a nice, quick, snappy trigger. The Magic Dremel bailed me out again, just kind of took five minutes to uh, just shave down a piece of wood there. Uh, now you can see the ohm meter, if I go a nice hair trigger, that should be just about enough where I can put the other cover on and it shouldn't interfere with the cover. If it is, then I'll just shave that down. Uh, I'm going to drop a bunch of hot glue down in there and wedge him in there and that should be good. I'll mock up the lid right now and see if it fits, but that's basically where I'm at right now. Trigger stop is installed. I also realized I had to run some wires through it, so I just drilled a small hole. I have just the amount of trigger travel I want right now and everything looks good to keep moving forward. I think what I'm gonna do with this gun, because I have a, a rifle I really wanna make nice, and now that I got my, uh, my pistol from Ray, I may or may not put rumble in this, because uh, I wanna save it for the rifle. But uh, as of right now, I have to add one more button, and this gun will be essentially an aim track, which, you can use both buttons. Uh, I always had trouble setting mine up with both of those buttons working. But I may do that. Uh, this will probably be the gun I leave for company when they company when they come over. Alright, so the next thing I wanted to do is get my buttons into some perf board. Uh, I got these buttons off Adafruit. They come with the caps. Um, all the switches are connected on ground. So what I'm going to do is, after I get the switches in, uh, the ground side control is going to go from ground, I'll probably make a pad over here, and I'm going to connect all the ground sides, and then these would go back to the Arduino boards. So I'm not exactly sure what order I want to do that, but that's what I'm going to do is uh, just get these inserted. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I uh, got some black wire here. I tinned it on the end with the solder and I stuck it through that hole there. And I'm just going to make a bridge between those two with some solder and then I'll jump all the way across to connect all the common grounds for the buttons. And then on the other side, I will do leads back to the Arduino board um, to the appropriate pins. Alright, so the button module is done. Uh, ground wire over here. And cord wires matching the buttons. Um, soldered down. Not the neatest thing in the world, but it works. Owned it all out. Everything's working good. That's going to get mounted probably uh, up in here in the grip area. Um, this guy here, it's going to get mounted there. Alright, so I'm back on the gun shell. I uh, made my three button module. Uh, it fits in there nicely. 
Uh, it was actually harder than I thought to make sure those are perfectly spaced. Um, but the interesting thing was uh, I had bought the 3D pen, the printing pen with the ABS, uh, to build up spots. Uh, Adam Bauer had said he had tried to mount the uh, perf board down and it didn't allow for the button travel, so I thought this would work. And the trials that I did seemed to be okay. And uh, so what I've done is I've put that, I've kind of mocked it up, I've drilled holes into it. And we are going to see if this thing works. Alright, so there it is. It's screwed down. Everything seems pretty good. Flipping it over. Three buttons seem to be good. Today I didn't intend on spending a lot of time on this, but I came down and wound up spending an hour or so. But today I mounted up the recoil solenoid. Um, it had a little ridge in the plastic, so I wedged it behind there, built up the back with some wood. And this particular smaller version, unlike this one, uh, the bigger one, that one the piston is held in. Uh, so on this one, if you want the piston to stay in place, you have to put it towards a wall. So I just had to build up the wall a little bit and glue in some wood. Um, soldered in to the MOSFET. Um, started soldering in the uh, power wires for the solenoid. Um, what else did I do today? And I started building a ground bar for the buttons. Um, there's only two real grounds on the Arduino. So I'm like making a little bus board and I'll bolt this down, but all the grounds for the buttons will come back to here. Uh, I think I have five buttons all together plus the D-pads that it's another five. So there should be ten spots on here that I'll chew up. Um, and that's about it for today. Uh, everything's coming along. And hopefully I can finish this up this week. So there I was. All done, had flashed everything, had checked all the buttons, and then I heard the windows to ding, and I thought I had a loose connection, so I went to check it, and I snapped off the USB port right off of the Arduino. So that's where I'm at. I gotta undo all the soldering and start over on a new one. So that's what Everything's all finished, a uh, little wire management, best I could. Um, I actually verified everything works on the GUI for gun for ir It actually took longer than I expected because I had the lens cap on the lens, so I couldn't do anything. And then finally I realized the lens cap was on. So after I took that off, everything went smoothly. Uh, I glued down the Arduino board, uh, tried to keep everything as best I can neat and tidy. And now I'm going to screw everything together and hope it still works. Okay, so that's the finished product. Uh, up front we have the fisheye lens. I have three buttons. Uh, trigger. Uh, you like to use this for relay out down here. Uh, the uh, flex loom. It's the same loom Adam recommended on his builds along with some of the shrink tubing. I added a stress relief boot on there. Uh, I want to especially thank Ray at RPEG Electronics. He is the man when it comes to all things gun for IR, whether it's a gun, components, uh, or anything uh, in between. He's a valuable resource for any of the equipment you might need 
or if you want to just purchase a gun outright or even have him uh, do a set of guns from existing guns you have, whether it's aim tracks or Simmons. Uh, I also want to thank Adam Bauer. I uh, always learned a ton on your videos. And also, uh, the other video I watched a ton of was the Arcade Pirate on YouTube. He uh, has done a couple of builds that I've watched as well. And now I'm going to go plug this guy in and see how it works.